All right, we should be recording right now. Let me just double check that things are looking okay. Things all right. Okay, hello everyone. So in this video, we are basically to program, we're going to program a cellular automata, in particular rule 30. And then if we have time, maybe we'll do um, the rest of the rules. So let me first explain a little bit the ty this type of video. So um, I am recording it, but I'm trying to do as little cuts as possible. So it's sort of like live coding, but in you know, a recorded video. And then f the reason for that is that I might do things uh, that might take time, like 15, 20 minutes or something, like install a package or things like that, uh, which I will cut out. But the point of these videos um, is basically to show you how, like the process of programming, the process, the, the thought process and everything um, that happens um, when you program. So I noticed um, on YouTube, a lot of videos show you how to do things. Um, and there's also a lot of live streams videos, which uh, do pretty much similar to what I'm doing right now. However, however they're very, very long. So I'm trying to f maybe fill in the gap here a little bit, uh, uh, but I'm mostly focusing on the process of actual programming, uh, which I have not seen too many videos of. So in this particular video, what we will do is focus on the cellular automata. So basically we will program something. We will program um, something that is it's relatively trivial, but maybe not really for some people. Uh, it's important to know that before I started this, I did not um, do any programming related to cellular automata. So I'm, I'm kind of doing it from scratch more or less, uh, which is the point of, of showing these uh, type of videos. Okay, so what's a cell? First of all, let's start with this. What's a cellular automata? So without going into like super mathy details and so on, it's basically you start with a row, like here, the first row, and the cells can either be black or white. And um, let's say we start with all the, all the cells white, except the middle one here, which is black. Uh, so that's your starting condition. And then the second row, it's basically the same, uh, this, on the second row, you basically decide the color of the cell based on the three that are on top. Okay, so let's take and if it's if it goes outside the bounding box, then you just consider that it's white. So for example, let's take this particular cell right here. We look at the, the three above it. So to the left, directly above and to the right. So we basically have three white cells. So we look at the rules. What are, you know, three white cells result in a white cell. So that's what these rules are. So basically, if we have all three black cells, we get the white cell. If we get two black and one white, we get white and so on. Uh, the reason why it's called rule 30 is that the resulting cell, basically it's either uh, white or black or zero or one. And if you write this out in binary, it's basically the number 30. It's to, uh, that's, uh, this converts to 40, uh, to 30 in, in binary. Um, okay. Um, so let's, uh, let's start with this. So the first, so, okay, actually I just thought about this. It, it kind of came to me, so I will do it. Um, I, I was just going to say, how, how do I know just for fun? How, how do I know this number is 30? Like how, how does that work? Okay. So if you don't know, then it, it's, um, the way it, you can, the way, the way you can figure it out. And you know, I'm about to start my project here. So for starting the project, I will use Visual Studio Code. So I have a um, folder already here and I have my Visual Studio Code. And I will code, by the way, the whole thing in JavaScript because I want to. And um, okay, the reason it's because it's the, the language I'm most comfortable with to build a UI at the moment. So that's the, the answer. So I created, uh, I basically created a new file. I press Control N, create a new file. By the way, when I'm doing these videos, I'm not going to tell you all these details, like what, exactly what keys I'm pressing and how I'm using my environment and my ID. Like that's not the point. The point is to show you 
I wanted to show you the thought process behind programming. Okay. So, whoops, I just created another one, which I'm going to delete. And why can't I delete? Oh, yeah, I think I can just close it. Okay. Save. Save this file. Not sure my where the shortcut didn't work, but whatever. Okay, so let's call this cellular automata JS. But first, let's deal with the with the binary stuff. So, see here we have. So how do I know this number in binary is thirty? So what you do in binary is you have slots, and let's say in this case we have eight in total. Why do we have eight? Well, because we arbitrarily chose three of these things to be the rulemaking. So, and each of the each of the boxes is uh, can be either black or white. So, therefore, we have a total of eight combination, eight possible combinations here. So, we have all black or all white or first two black, last two black, and then in the middle uh, and then on the side. So, in total, we have eight. Two to the power of three because these are three it's eight so we have eight bits basically so um okay and this is how we represent binary so we have slots one two three four five six seven eight okay and for each of these slots this basically the way it works this can be either zero it can be either zero or one um, in this case, we have three zeros, four ones, and a zero. So we have one, two, three, four, no, three zeros, one, two, three, four, and a zero. And then how do you get to number 30 from this? Well, the way you do things in binary, first of all, you read from right, from right to left, you read it in this direction. And these are power of two if they exist or not. So this can be written again as in um, <clears throat> two to the power. So I'll just write the powers of two right now. So, you know, we start at zero. So this will be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are the power of, of two. So this, this, what this means is this is this slot is two to the power of seven, two to the power of six, two to the power of five, four, and so on. And the zeros and ones will give you which one is activated and which one is not. So basically, the first one this is zero to the power of, and so then we have we have digits in here. So again, starting from right to left, so we have two to the power of zero, which is one. Then we have two to the power of one, which is two. To the power of two, which is four, to the power of three, which is eight, or basically just doubling. Sixteen is two to the four, two to the five is thirty-two, two to the six is sixty-four, and two to the seven is two fifty-six. Right? No, it's one twenty-eight. Um, and then basically, you know, if we add all this up, it's two fifty-six. So that's the total or two fifty-four. 255. Um, now I have to check 2 to the power of 8, which is the next one is 256. Yeah, so this will be 255 in total. So basically, the zeros and ones will show you if this number is present or not. So rewriting from above. So the first three are zeros. So this is not present. This is not present. This is not present. The next four, so the ones, one, two, three, so there's four ones, so these are present, one, two, three, four, and the last one is not present. And then we basically, so these are, these are the numbers that are present, so we just add them up together. So eight plus eight is 16. Why am I getting... Sixteen plus eight plus four plus two. Thirty. Okay, I miscounted. Yes. So if I add them all up, they basically so 
this is equal to 30. So that's where it's rule 30 comes from. Uh, but that's not what I wanted to do, but that's fine because this is part of the thinking process. So when I build something like this, I'm trying to figure out where exactly all this stuff is coming from. Uh, just a quick check that I'm still recording. Yeah, everything seems to look okay. Do I have sound? Check, check. Yeah. All right. Okay, so let's continue. Let's, let's program this. Let's go back to my ID. Uh, now, for this to work, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this in JavaScript. And for that, I will use a canvas. And for canvas, I don't want to write everything from scratch. So I have this library P5.js, which is super cool. And I'm going to use um, this one. Um, I want, uh, okay, so I have an option to download the file, compress or uncompress, so I can see the source code, um, or linking, link it from, a, um, from the content delivery network. Um, let me download the uncompressed file. to download this I will not pay money right now but maybe I will in the future I cannot paste directly there I thought I could okay documents personal blog Flare automata I still have untitled one saved here I don't want it to so go away Okay, so I have the P5.js library. I don't care about the code right now. I just want to get started like a simple canvas, uh, your first sketch file. So, uh, okay, so in order to set up the main file, in this case, I'm basically, I need to just create these two files. Okay, so what I'm going to do, okay, so this is one thing I decided to do, and maybe I'll break this rule sometimes, but I'll do my best not to, um, to break it too much. I think I can close this. Um, I will basically try not to copy paste code from somewhere else, even if it's trivial, I will type it out. Well, because it's better like that. Um, Okay, so let me call, okay, so the automata, so let's call this, um, okay, let's just write it in this type of JavaScript first, setup. So again, this is not a JavaScript course or anything, I'm just trying to build something, so I, I will not go into details, at least that's not the main point to go into details into JavaScript and, and this type of technologies, there's so many tutorials online that will do that. So, okay, create canvas. 400, 400, 400, 400. I don't put semicolons because I'm cool like that. Function draw. So in JavaScript, you can e either put semicolons or not. Uh, I don't put them. Background to 20. Okay. Um, so now, how do I put this? Um, do, 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 okay. I need to do the HTML file. So, okay, I, I can just create another one, save it as index.html. And in here, okay, HTML, head scripts, source equals, and then the file I just created. So, cellular formatter.js. Okay, close head, okay, body. I think there's nothing in here, but I still, it's a good idea to add them. Main, main, okay, that's it. And now to view this, so basically go live. I have this plugin on my VS Code that does this live thing. Let's see, does it work? I 
I'm not sure if it worked because it didn't find the file. Okay, so what I need to do, I also need to add the, the P5 library which I downloaded here, p5.js, so do, 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 script, script, okay, sorry, it's equals, uh, p5.js, it's right there, let's try again, aha, we have our canvas, this is our canvas, so the one I drew here, background, okay, if I make the background red, 25500 this is red okay let's put it back to a nice gray color that was pretty good actually so we have a gray background so now let's go back oh this is pretty cool trefoil knot we'll get to that maybe some other time um where was it okay so back to this so now basically what i'm trying to do is replicate this so I counted this, it doesn't have to be this many, but it is basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This is 16th once, once. So there's 30. I am, let's just make 32 across, and well, let's just make 20 down. Uh, so basically, let me just write this down. So our grid will be 32 across and 20 20 down okay now each square let's make it each square should be 20 by 20. i mean we'll make it dynamic actually first of all i want to change this um I want to see if it works if I just change this to ES yes, six syntax. So I'm just changing to ES six JavaScript syntax. Uh, just because I think it looks much better. Does it still work? No, it doesn't work. Why? Why it doesn't work? this is all part of the process i wanted to change this to es6 and it doesn't work so let's see p5 js um yes six sketch file uh, no. i don't want no that's typescript Okay, I don't want to debug this right now, so I will revert back to the way it was. 20 by 20, okay. So now we're back to here. Um, I'll leave these two functions alone. Maybe I have to do something else, which I don't feel like dealing with right now. But can I write another function? Const, um, okay, let's use, use a real one, draw row and i'm gonna give it um the number i give it the number of tiles so uh, with um make this 32 in tiles Wait, equal. And yeah, okay. Can we call it row width? No. Yeah, row width and height. Okay, width and height. Fine. Height is 20 in number of rows. Okay, so draw row. And. I will pass in width, let's say. So uh, here 
uh, I will just do something and see that it works right now because I wanted to check if the ES6 syntax works. So, so I'm just checking right now. Actually, let's just draw a rectangle. So, no. right, rectangle 20, 20, 20, 20. Um, so let's look at an API here that are reference. So these are all the things you can do shape. Okay, so I want to draw a rectangle. This library is really cool, by the way. Okay, so I draw a rectangle at location 30, 20 with the width and height of. Okay, so let me make it a little bit. So width and height is at the end, so let's make it 60. 60, and I want another color so I can do fill. Um, okay, let's make it red. 250, 500. Zero, zero. And I want to draw this, draw a row. And I have to pass in something. Okay. Okay, it drew a rectangle. Okay, so it works. I can use, so basically I can use, I'm just going to leave, leave these functions as yes, five syntax so i'm going to leave these two functions like this the rest i can just use es6 because i like it better okay so first i want to make um okay so now let's make let um box size equals so each box is let's say 20 pixels in pixels okay and i want um now what I want to do is box size. Uh, I want to basically recreate the first row. Actually, no, the canvas. First, I want to make the canvas. Okay, so first, create canvas. Okay, so this canvas canvas has to be so with height so the first one is the width width has to be uh, the width that I defined above so 32 boxes times box size okay so width is width times box size and then the height it will be height times box size so let's see how does it look like now okay i think this looks okay and now i want to basically draw so draw a row with 32 okay so now i want to draw 32 of this so i want the rectangle first of all uh let's draw it at zero and zero and i wanted the size to be box size box box size so we have a red triangle here and I want 32 of them. So for uh, I equals here I less than width. Okay, plus plus, okay. Um, the filling I only need to do once. I'll make it red for now. Um, okay, I'm drawing a rectangle. And I'm drawing it at, okay, that's, that's the width. And then I have to give it, hmm. I have to give, basically, I have to tell it how wide it is. So I'm already telling it how wide, but I need, I want to tell him, tell it which, hmm. I have to tell it which row to draw, or no, or how many rows. You know what? It will draw. So it will draw all of them. That's what it will do. Draw, I will call this draw grid. Draw grid. So basically, what I will do is the initial. So the. Yeah. Okay, so. I will call this, okay, 
the first row will be given and then each subsequent row will take its rules from above okay let's see how that works so let, okay so i'm drawing let, let, let's draw the whole grid and let's make it like maybe a nice dark black no white i want white so so 50 so 20 I only need basically to fill this once. So I go, okay, I have to use two loops. So I go for the width. Actually, no, I will first go for row, for let row R. Start from zero and then uh, let row equals zero row less than height row plus plus so I'm iterating through all the rows and then for each row um, okay so now for each row I will go through the columns all the way to the width and then for each column so I'm basically um, location 30 20 so I'm assuming this is x y so I'm assuming this yeah the first one will be the I and the second so this will be so row so for ex so i will draw it at position i 32 boxes so i times box size plus box size i have no idea does this look okay okay it draws boxes One, two, three, four, five. Six. Okay, I'm not going to count them all. Um, but I needed to start from the beginning. So. Okay, so I just removed the plus boxes. So I think this is fine. And I want the fill. Does this work to be white? Okay, so they're white. Okay, okay. Um. Okay, and now let's do the rows. Okay, so for row, it's basically just row times um, box size because they're square. So now we have a grid. Cool. Now I want basically fill color. So this is where I want to. I will fill in the color. I will not do it here. Okay, so we still have this. Okay. I want... Okay, first, let's define... Okay, let's define the rules. So, we basically have the, the rules... Rule... Let's do a rule 30. Rule 30 would be like this. So basically, one, one, one will give me one. One, one, zero will give me zero. No, sorry, uh, zero. So I'm just going left to right from these. Um, one, zero, one will give me zero. One, zero, zero will give me one. 
Okay. Um, one zero 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 one one will give me one. Oh, uh, zero one one. Okay, zero one zero. So zero one zero. This will give me one. Zero zero one. This will give me also one. And finally, zero 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 will give me zero. So these are the rules. Now, how can I do this? I mean, I can just <laughs> I can just hard code them. That will be okay. Although I don't think it's the most elegant solution. So hmm, and now this is the interesting part. So I'm just think now I'm completely thinking out loud without any kind of preparation. What I can do is I can do something like const rule equals yeah, const rule equals something like one 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 zero zero zero. So basically have uh zero 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 I said. There will be a rule, so okay. So this will be rule one, would be like this. Rule, rule two will be one one zero. So one one zero, and it results also in zero, and so on. I wonder if this is efficient. If this is the most elegant way to do this. Basically, what I'm trying to do as I'm iterating through this loop, I can do something like. Oh, I also need to store. The problem is, I need to store the. Okay, I'm drawing this thing fine, but I need to store the rows above. So what I need is basically like a something like a starting row. Yeah, this is better. So I need something like starting row and then one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. The sixteenth one is one, and then another fifteen there. So this is my starting row. So I need to do something else, I need to basically do I need to do draw a row row which will be just an array so now I basically go for that I in uh, I think I think it's like that. No. Uh, let i equal zero. I less than. I forgot. Can you do? Um, so see, I, I'm I forgot a particular JavaScript syntax right now. So I will just quickly try it uh, in the Node environment. So if I have let um, const uh, row equals one, two, three, four. Okay, so I have row like this. Can I do for how do you do for each? For each 
job is script. Or as you know, I want four x in something like that for x in array. Does it work for x of row? So the log x. Okay, that I think that should do it. I will go with this. I want to do this for x of r. So for each of these, basically, what I want to do is. If x equals zero, then I will fill it with white, else fill with black, and okay, and then draw. Items box size. Uh, let's see, I need to. Uh, I need the index. I never like this type of loops. I, I'll just do proper the proper way. Uh, row dot length. Okay. Um, or so I don't. I I, I need. I'm, I will just use a normal for loop. For i equals zero. I uh, less than r dot length i plus plus and okay so if r index i is zero then fill it with this otherwise okay and that's box size uh so this is a row so i send in the row and i also need to roll position which row is here so row position will come from somewhere else row position okay box size box size okay so draw rows so i want to instead of draw grid i want to do a draw row starting row and there's nothing here uh, Okay, um, so draw row, okay, draw row, row position, okay, starting row, row position, zero, okay. So now I'm back to, okay, I'm, seems like I'm missing a, z, a cell, uh, Let's add one more here. Okay. Now it seems okay. So they're starting. Okay. So now, okay. So I have a function. Okay. So, so the initial draw grid thing was not such a good idea. So I deleted it. And okay. I have a row. The row is manually defined like this. Okay. So what I'm doing is I have to do. So I have to first calculate row. then draw the calculated row so i'm going to do this for let i equals zero i less than um i can just close this less than a uh, height which is 20 so less than 20 i uh, plus plus so I will do right now calculate row. So const calculate row. No, compute row sounds better. And um, I will pass in the old row. No, previous, previous row. 
and it will return so it will do some computation and then return okay return um for now it just returns the previous one uh so compute so i will do let new row equals compute row and then previous row and then in here um da, 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 da. So let previous row equals starting row. The new row is this. Draw. Draw the new row. Draw the new row. And then... To put this outside, draw the new row and then re previous row equals new row. I think this should work. And then when I draw row, I wanted to draw at position i, and it broke it. Okay, maybe because every time I draw a row, okay, so fill everything with white, first of all. And then when I draw a row, row position times uh, box size. Okay. Okay, so now basically, okay, I have a variable called previous row, which I'm setting it up as the starting row. Then the new row, I have this compute function where I pass the previous row and it should return me a new one. I fill everything with white, I draw, I fill the brush with white, I draw a row, the new one at the position, and then I set the previous row to the new one that you just calculated here. So that, I think that's pretty straightforward. So now let's focus on the compute row function. Uh, so in this one, I basically need rules. So this is where this part comes in with rules. Um, Let me just do it in the most simple, naive way. Let me just do it. I, I will just focus on rule 30. So I will do it in a naive way. So uh, at the rules here again okay let's do this so one 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 will result in zero so basically first three i'm just using a simple array first three are the above row and the last this is the result and i will just hard code this there's only eight it's not a big deal let's code them see what happens so i have basically uh So, so I, I have eight of this, so four, and then this. Okay, eight. So I have eight. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm just going from left to right. So one, 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 zero, one, zero, one. So one, zero, one. One zero zero one zero zero so one zero zero one okay one zero one one zero 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 okay zero one one I need the next one zero one one zero one one 
and then zero one zero zero one zero and then zero zero one zero zero one and then the last one zero 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 okay and then the rules okay so zero 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 and then one 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 and the last one is zero so these are my rules so what i will do very naive way let uh new row equals mtra let me actually populate them all with uh with zero just to be safe so i will do for zero i less than previous row dot length plus plus so i would say new row dot push zero and i return new row so now we should have the first row as is with the first one black and go to or if you go to the first one will be black and everything else should be white after that so actually i need to start uh -huh. so i need basically to draw the reason for this is i need to draw the first one draw row starting row at position zero so that one needs to go on its own and then i start from one so i skip one row so if i do this then yeah so this is my first initial row just to make sure it works let's add if i change this to one do i have yeah, okay so i have a, a black square there okay back to this okay so now i'm computing i'm pushing all zeros what if i push all at once it's all black okay so it works push zero but now i want to do condition for this so basically uh so i'm going from left to right through this so okay so i want something like this if previous row position i minus one so basically from the previous row one to the left if the previous row one to the left is equal to hmm, how do i match them a bit tricky because i don't want to write a lot of code i basically want to get the first three oh, i want to basically get the top three elements from the previous row so i can calculate so i can find which rule to apply that's what i'm trying to do mm. thinking of doing something else so instead of doing the rules like this I, I will do what if I do this const rules this is an array but now I'm going to make it an array of arrays so rule So on, 
I mean, I'm thinking. I'm thinking I can do it with. Um, I can do it with the JSON string also. What if I do it with the JSON? So then I will do something like const rules. Equals. I forgot how to do an inline JSON object JavaScript. Mm, yeah, okay. So rules, and then I can do something like I can even just do them as strings. So I can say one one one. Yeah, maybe I'll do this. We'll give you a zero. One one zero will give you zero. Okay. One zero one will give you zero also. One zero zero give you one. One zero zero over zero one one. Okay. One zero one zero one zero zero one one zero zero one and zero 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 will give you zero. Don't really like this solution too much, but um, I think it's the fastest one that will work right now. So now when I do the checking here I can basically do I can do something like const current rule so I'm looking at the basically the rule that comes above in the row above so this one will be Let uh, current rule equals empty string. Just going to concatenate them. <coughs> so first of all, if I'm at the edge on the left side, so if so, there's two edge cases. So if I equals zero. I have to do something if was if I is equal to previous row dot length minus one. So also I might if I'm at the end, I have to do something else at the beginning at the end. Else this is normal case, normal case. Okay, so then basically the rule will be previous row index i minus one plus plus uh, previous row i minus one previous row i minus i and then plus previous row I plus one. <laughs> part of uh, part of the recording, my uh, my dog heard something. I plus plus. Uh, sh 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 sh. <laughs> part of the process. It's reality. So, okay. Normal case. I look at the above uh, three. Cases from, from above. And I'm going to save this to current rule equals to this stuff. And then I'm pushing 
basically rows and then I'm looking for current row. So I'm building a string. I'm building a string and basically I'm building a string that should look like this and then grabbing the output for that and that's what I'm pushing. Let's see, I'm writing too much code uh, more than I wanted to, but that's fine. Uh, let's do the edge cases. Um, you know, just for simplicity, I will do current rule equals zero, zero, zero. Uh, just hard code the edge cases for now, because I want to see if this stuff actually works. Um, I don't, oh, it actually worked from the first try. You gotta be, you gotta be kidding me. I can't believe this actually worked from the beginning. <laughs> and it kind of looks like this. I mean, because the edge cases are, are not there. Um, cool. Okay. So let's do the edge cases too. So if I'm at the beginning, I will basically do, yeah, so if I'm the, at the beginning, I'm just hard coding a zero plus top and one to the left. And if I am at the end, I'm basically doing one to the left and one above plus, and I'm adding a zero at the end. So if I'm outside the, the canvas then it's um it's just uh going outside if i'm so if i'm outside the sorry if i'm outside the canvas then it will just be zero okay save it oh horrible what happened here um Am I getting any errors? Okay, so it seems like something is happening for at this one. Maybe I need to add this. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is just a JavaScript so weirdness. Okay. So uh, I just put the casted it to string at the beginning. Uh, so now now it's running fine. And this looks very similar to this. I think this one runs for 15 iterations. So if I put mine to run for 15 iterations, which is uh, uh, 2020 20 is supposed to be the height. So let's actually use the variables. So running it to height, and if I make the height 15, now it's 15, okay, maybe 16 to see one more row. So now this should probably be identical to this rule. Nice. So now let's see what happens. Um, let's put this back here. How do I put this back here? So now let's see what happens. I want to run it like in this case, uh, they run. Okay. So they ran it for 15 steps. Let's run it for more steps. So in this case, they run it for 250 iterations. So, in, in order to do that, first of all, let me get rid of all this extra code. Um, actually, let's have some fun first. What if I introduce something? What if this is not... Um, uh, let me duplicate it. What if this one is not the starting point? What if it's this one? 
Okay, so everything gets shifted to the left. Okay, and okay, what if? Okay. Um. What if I start from the original one, but I add also one more here and one more here? Ah, cool. Okay, going back to the original starting point. Uh, in order to run it for more iterations, I need to make it wider. So let's make it 32. Okay, I think I can. Okay, what if we make this 128 in tiles? Okay. And why doesn't it do the whole thing? So, well, because okay, so now the starting row, the starting row has to be more. So, if I change this, okay, I'm gonna keep a little bit less. So, 64. Okay. Um. Let's write the function const compute starting row. Uh, num cells. So start starting row. So num cells. Okay, so for i equals for zero i less than num cells. Let me actually do it first with uh, thirty two. Um, okay, so I'm back here, and now I'm going to use this function for the starting row. So starting row thirty two. Cells. Like I just want to create like compute starting row, and uh, I'll just set the middle one again to um, to true. So um, okay for each of these, basically, if i is equal to I want to say I got to halfway there, so math dot for num cells divided by two. So if I'm halfway there, fill black, fill zero. No, um, I'm basically doing the starting row. A push but one and in any other case uh, starting row push zero and then I can do a return starting row and then I don't use this one anymore Compute starting row. So now that starting row equals compute starting row number of cells. Both. Okay, so I'm running it and it's the same. Okay, and if I change with from 32 to 64. Now the whole thing is bigger, okay, and the height, I will run it now for a hundred iterations. Problem is, uh, when I run it for so many iterations, okay, I have to make it wider, so I want to make box size, let's make it half, so 10 pixels, and then width uh, and, uh, 256 
Oh, now it's starting to look like something. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Nice. This is so cool. Can we make the box size even smaller? Let's like make it four pixels. What happens then? Oh, now I can really see the patterns in the thing. Okay, and I want to run it for a few more iterations, for 200 iterations. Need to make it a bit more wider, 256, 512. Let's do that. That took a little bit, but wow, it looks nice. Cool. I wonder if I can add... So this is just for fun. So I think that's it. This is the end of this video. But just for fun, let's go back to with the original conditions. With 32, I think. Height, 15. Box size, 20. And every time I draw, so every time, actually every time I draw a rectangle, let me see if I can add a delay here. I forgot how to do that. Add a sleep delay in Java script. Uh, set timeout. Uh, I don't want this. Uh, stack overflow. What's the sleep version? Hmm. It's interesting. There's a new way to do this. I didn't know that. So let's do a wait. Okay. Does this work? So okay. Await new promise. Set timeout R I mean milliseconds, let's say one second. Does it work? is only available, okay. Ah, okay, so I have to write it, okay. Do something like this, const sleep equals many seconds. Uh-huh, many seconds, and then I can do no from New promise or set timeout or milliseconds, okay, and then I can do constantly, okay, and then I'll wait sleep milliseconds. No? Still no? seem to work like this. Okay, can I just do go fashion way, set timeout, timeout, one second, and then draw this stuff here. I think you will draw them all at once because this one, this one also has 
probably asynchronous, so let me do it like a hundred milliseconds or something. Refresh this. Make sure it's okay. Seem doesn't seem to work, but now I'm intrigued. Okay, so I will say so. This works. So this works. Um, do, 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 do. Ah. Maybe, whoops, maybe because of the library one I'm using. Uh, okay, um, how to use delays in P5.js. Um, okay, okay, so um, basically. I think there's um yes this one the meal is function yes okay so maybe I can do it with that so this is a little bit special way of doing things for the um, uh, for the p5 library so let's try that. So draw a row. So when I draw the row, I want to basically yeah. Let's try this. So let milliseconds go oh, milli millis. Uh, but what does okay? So p five just millis. What does that do? Returns the number of milliseconds since starting the sketch. This regression is for timing events and initial sequences. Okay, so since the starting. Okay, so I need. So if the millis. So every 500 milliseconds will be if milliseconds mod 500 equals zero. So every 500 milliseconds, draw this. I think that should wait. Uh, let's see what happens. Nothing happened. Okay, let's see. Console dot log milliseconds. Let's see what comes out of it. Okay, this is the millisecond stuff. Okay. And then I want to milliseconds odd five hundred. Hmm. Okay, it's never exact thing. Okay, so I, what I can do is if milliseconds mod 500 is less than 2 Okay, so the millisecond keeps going up, but I can't count. Okay, uh, maybe frames. Maybe I can use frames. Uh, how? 
uh, how to grab the frame number B5JS. Frame count, okay, so get text size, okay, so frame count. Okay, so it's just a variable frame count, okay. Um, so in the setup frame rate, set up, set up. Let's set. 60 frames per second so then uh, what I will do is I don't need the millis I don't need this if frame, frame count odd so once per frame let's see mod 60 equals 0 let's see what that does I think I will leave the animation for some other time because I just don't feel like doing it right now. Last try. Yeah, 